This is the plaintiff, Susan Atkinson. She says she rented what she thought was going to be an oceanfront air-conditioned room in the defendant's house. But when she arrived, she was informed her room wasn't ready because the former tenants refused to leave. She was given a small, dirty room with no air conditioning. The place was infested with rats. And after 12 days, she up and left. She did not get what she paid for. The defendant pulled a real switcheroo on her. And she's here suing for the $3,800.26. She's owed. This is the defendant, Joy Wood. She says she rents out rooms in her wonderful house overlooking the ocean and was contacted by the plaintiff. The plaintiff seemed very happy when she arrived a few days earlier than agreed upon, so she gave her a different room and everything was fine. Then, one day, two weeks later, the plaintiff just vacated without even telling her. Why should she return her money? She left of her own volition and she feels she owes nothing. She's accused of lousy landlording. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says she moved into the defendant's house. Turns out it was infested with rats. Yuck. Well, the defendant says the plaintiff arrived a few days earlier than expected, so she temporarily had to give her another room. And yes, there was one rat who got in. It's the case of you dirty rat. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Ms. Atkinson. Yes. You decided that you wanted to come down from, where is it, North Carolina? Yes. And you decided that you wanted to spend some time in the Florida Keys. You find Ms. Wood's rental on what venue? Where do you find it? Craigslist? On what? No, uh, for mutual friends of hers and mine. Joy oh. and I didn't know each other, but mutual friends suggested that I go there because I didn't get my house that I had last year in Venture Out. Okay, so you decide to go down there, and how long were you going to spend down in, in Kajo Key? February and March. All right. Um, and so, Ms. Wood, you own a house with how many bedrooms? Four bedrooms. And you have taken to renting the rooms out um, because it's something you enjoy. It gives you an extra income, and, uh, and then you have some company. So you had some tenants there before she gets there that were a bit of a problem, correct? Yes. Tell me about that. <laughs> well, the first was a really good friend of a good friend. I have a Navy SEAL friend who's really helped me a lot before the hurricane and done things. He, he came and started living in my house last summer, and he had a little bit of a drinking problem, but kind of kept things together pretty good enough to do some work. He was working and paying his rent. And then in just before September, this same Navy SEAL friend had met a mother and her daughter in Key West, the mother was a rider, and the daughter is on the Osberger spectrum, and they have a service dog, and that I like to help riders and artists. Are they the ones who became? Are they the ones who became the problem tenants? Yep, they became the squatters. Because in the beginning, she was going to pay squatters me squatters because rent. did they did they stop paying you rent? Yes, I finally tried to evict them, and they were going to be out December 31st, but they weren't. So then I had to go back to court and do a more formal eviction where I had to pay a bunch of money, and then they were going to be out. That, um, that's actually called the eviction. That's when you've actually started the eviction, when you pay the money, pay the sheriff, start the yep. court case. So right. that begins in January, and did you eventually get them out? Or do they still live there? No, no, they, they finally left at March. I mean, they had to be out at 7 p.m. one day, and they were out at 6 59 that day before the sheriff would have come. Because and before out. the sheriffs would drag them out by the hair. Okay, yeah. All right, right. so now, so Ms. Atkinson, let me so ask you, you were supposed back. to be going down, hold on, Ms. Wood, Ms. Atkinson, so you go down there, you're going to pay $500 a month, which is a pretty good deal for a house that's, yeah. you're right on the water, you're very, I got to say, I'm looking at you remotely in your home, and the whole thing's very bloodline to me, it looks it, like that show, it's, uh, you know, all the dark wood, the old Florida, it's got to have that feel where the breezes are coming, and I just, I know the keys very well, and I just have this feel looking at you and where you are right now that that's what you're selling to other people and that's what you're enjoying in your home. Am I right? Yes. All right, but she rented a particular room, correct, Miss Atkinson? And when did you first learn that you weren't going to get the room you rented? When I pulled in her driveway and went in there. Okay, Ms. Wood, 
When did you first tell Ms. Atkinson that she wasn't going to get the room that she rented? I told her when she called me a day early and said she was on the way, I told her that she was not going to be able to be in the room she was planning to, but that I had another room available for her. I still need to do a little cleaning. Okay, Ms. Wood, here's the question I have for you. Why is it that you wait until she calls you the day before to tell her, hey, listen, before you drive down from North Carolina, I got to tell you, they haven't left. You know it for weeks and weeks. So why aren't you informing her of this before she comes down so that she can make a decision about whether or not she wants to rent the different room? Why is it a surprise when she's in your driveway? I think I told her that I expected them to be out. I completely expect them yes, to be out. Yes, darling, but you know they're not out. That's right. So if things change and they weren't out, then it was time for you to call the person you had a contract with and say, listen, don't come down here because I can't rent you that room. They've never left. They were supposed to leave the end of December, and it is now the end of January. I know they haven't left, and so I'm telling you, don't come down because I can't rent you the room. But, lady, I got this other room. Do you want this other room? Now, Ms. Atkinson, what is the problem with the other room that you ended up getting? It didn't have air conditioning. She said it had a double bed. Oh, goodness. She got you really don't have to go any further past it didn't have air conditioning. Listen. Ms. Wood, why wouldn't it be something that bothers someone from North Carolina especially if it doesn't have air conditioning? Well, it actually has a room air conditioner we could have put up. However, I looked at my text. And I it doesn't, her, does it? It was 52 degrees here. I was getting out blankets for her to have in her room. January, it is not hot in the Florida Keys. But if she Okay, let me tell you what's not going to happen. You're not going to tell me how hot it is in the Florida Keys in January. Because I spend a lot of time in the Florida Keys. So, yes, it is not miserable and death-defying like it is in August. And, yes, you could catch a wonderful breeze. But you know who that's not up to? You and I. It's up to the person who rented the room who thought she'd have an AC. All right, so anyway, but you come down, and let me tell you what doesn't happen, Ms. Atkinson. You don't leave. And I know it's hard because you've driven down, you're in a car, you have all your belongings, and you have a, a, your service animal with you, right, your pet. So you decide, okay, let me try to make the best of it. And according to you, you look for other places in the Keys, and of course you're not going to find a room for $500 in the Keys in February when all the snowbirds are here. So what is it that you do? You end up trying to make the best of it. Tell me how the best of it worked out for you. Well, um, it wasn't clean. The kitchen uh, was not clean, and Joy told me, if you don't, if you don't buy the palm olive and stuff, they, they won't wash the dishes. There are ants and... and uh, Worst of all, there were 2.30 in the morning, there was uh, rats in the room where Ladybug and I were, the dog's Ladybug, where I was. And she started chasing them and barking. And and uh, so that um, I went down in my van, grabbed my dog, and it was it, it was a thumping noise. You know, I didn't see the rat. I saw my rat terrier chasing it. I take her downstairs, and I text you and I said listen ladybug's going crazy because there's rats and she and she told me she said maybe your dog barking will make them get out and I said that's not what I wanted to hear so um eventually she said that maybe your me. dog barking would scare the rats now did the rats do any damage uh yeah what they do the here's a picture you sent me of your cooler these are the the rats end up eating through that. Why do you have, did you draw that picture of, oh, there's rats. You got a little picture of rat and you got a little picture of an ant. Tell me about the ant problem. Well, the rat that did this cooler was in the living room because my cooler was downstairs at the time. And mm -hmm. the rats in the room just were running around and thumping. <laughs> and I didn't want to be in a room to sleep with rats. So when I came down, did you end up actually morning, sleeping in your van for a little while in the front seat? Then she told me you can come back in. I killed one. Oh, geez. OK. Uh, All right. Um, tell me about the amp problem. OK. Um, she uh, asked me to get her mail. So I go get the mail and uh, I had all mine forwarded and I had IRS stuff. Mm -hmm. and all. So I go get the mail and Ladybug screeched. 
And I brought her in and I said, Ladybug, um, her paws all swollen and red. So I ended up taking her to the vet. Oh, she said the fi- it's a, well, the vet said it's a fire ant bite, a fire ant sting. So I ended up taking her to the vet. Right. Uh, the one uh, but, the and how is that? Can I ask you a question? How is that Miss Wood's fault? I mean, they're, they're fire ants. They're ants in the outdoors. You know, I mean, you're, you know, you're from North well, Carolina. I, it's not like you don't understand. She could have told me you know. ahead of time. She could have told, told me. Told you there were ants? No, she... you, you learn about where you're visiting and moving to. That's silly. Oh, my gosh, your dog is so cute. Is that your dog? Yeah. That's a beautiful dog. All right, don't let my dog see that because she's going to get jealous. Okay, is this you and your dog? Yep. Nothing like the zinc on the nose from the northerners coming down here. Good Lord, what am I looking at here? What's this ventriloquist dummy with the bushy eyebrows? What's going on? What's this? What's the ventriloquist when dummy? I, when I got to Joy's, I uh, brought a lot of stuff in. I have all kinds of stuff and a guitar. Or are whatever. you a ventriloquist or you do this for fun? Are you good at it? Do you know how to do it? Do you have the dummy with you? She's in the back room. Listen, I don't get enough fun remotely here. I would really <laughs> like to hear your dummy. I'll be back. Oh. oh, my goodness. Okay. Douglas, swear in the dummy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I have to say, I've never done uh, this one before. Actually, let's, let's see. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I... Welcome back to the People's Court. We're in the home stretch for this case. Uh, this is the first one I've ever seen testimony from a dummy. Let's go back into the courtroom. Um, Raise the dummy's right hand. Please. <laughs> All right, you, you, you sure about this, Your Honor? Here we go. I am. I've never been more sure. <laughs> you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Your Honor? You said I do. Could you hear? <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. What's the dummy's name? Katie Doll. Katie, what was it like living there? I was scared. Why? What made you scared? Because they kept getting thrown around, like just get in the van, get in the, get in the room, in the racks. Why were, you ha hmm. Why were you having to go from the van to the room and to the van to the room? What was causing that to happen? Because somebody might steal me. Oh. So let me ask you, did you sustain some kind of injury when that happened? Yeah, my left eye. What happened to it? Ooh, it's a little droopy. <laughs> That's what happened to it. It got hit. It got somehow hit in the foot in the here, foot in the there, and then I... Uh, okay, um, but who was carrying you when it got hit? Suzanne. Okay, all right. Um, she looked stress. She was under a lot of stress? Okay. Did you ever get bit by the rats or the ants? No. Okay, we're good, okay? I'd like to speak to Suzanne now. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Ms. Atkinson, at the end of your tenancy, after the 11 days, you couldn't take it anymore because, according to you, the tenants were out of control. What was wrong with the tenants? Besides Ms. Ms. Wood pointing out to you that they would steal anything that wasn't nailed down, according to you, did they actually steal your stuff? Yeah, I'd buy food and they would eat it. They would eat your food? Did they, and, did they uh, ask you permission, or did they tell you they were going to eat it, or they would just no. eat it behind your back and deny it? All right. It's um, gone. And, okay. And Joyce said um, it was them that, that they would do that. Okay. Did you ever see them do that? Yeah, I did. When I came down to the kitchen, I see them eating something. But there were some times I would give, I would buy some, something like not organic that isn't expensive and say, here, you guys can have some food. But that was after mine was missing. I figured that would kind of soothe their need for food. Oh, well, it's not really your place to have to soothe their need for food. You end up leaving because you can't stand it. And I know you can't stand it because you actually ended up leaving. So it's, uh, you do that on the 11th and you say to her, I want my money back. And what does she do? Does she give you back your $500? No, she- uh... All right, now Ms. Wood, let me ask you a question. You know that what you sold her is not what you delivered that you didn't even tell her until she was almost at your doorstep that, hey, it's going to be a different... According to her, you didn't even tell her until she was at your doorstep. You knew that those people didn't leave the month before. You never call her. You wait for her to call you the day before and tell her, ah, I got a different room for me. You'll be fine. And then 
she's so miserable because you keep telling her they're going to steal your food, they're going to do this, they're going to do that, that she, and plus you have a rat infested place, okay? Um, tell me, is she making up the rat issue or is there a rat issue? Because there's often a rat issue by the water, I know that, I'm not naive. But is there, are there, there is a rep. Okay, perfect. So if you know all that, why isn't it fair that you return, if not all, at least most of her money? Well, first of all, I had told her earlier that I wasn't sure which room she would end up in because of the changes that were happening. I told her that in January. We I'm going to need you to, time. I'm going to need you to prove that. Prove to me that you did that. Well, I've got text messages, but I don't remember if it was in a text message, but I know. Yeah. Okay, well, here's how it works. You can't, as a litigant, look at the judge and then tell them, oh, don't worry about what it is you're basing your ruling on, judge, because uh, I told her. You can't do that. You've got to show me proof that you told her. If you're going to alter a verbal contract, show me the proof that you did. Show me a text. Show me an email. I've been through all the evidence. I know you haven't submitted anything like that. So, And I know she's upset about the lack of AC. But let's put aside the room issue. Let's just talk about you've been trying to remove people who you say are a problem, who you say steal, and you have a rat problem. Why is this not, in your eyes, sufficient to return some or all of her money until you get your house in order? Well, I put her in the nicest room in the house. It didn't have the best view, but it was a really big, beautiful room. There was air conditioning available if she needed it. It was on the second floor, not the third floor. She didn't have to carry her dog or get the dog up so many stairs or carry all Ms. the Wood, I think that what we have here is, um, is a failure to communicate, not only between you and Ms. Atkinson, but between you and I. You seem to think okay. that you are the arbiter of who rents what. Don't complain because this is better. That is opinion. I'm here only to enforce <laughs> contracts not opinion. So it's not up to you to say, well, the, the view's not as good, but the breeze is better and it's bigger. Those are things that are important to you. If they're not important to the person who booked the room, then you don't get to use those as a defense. All right, folks, I've looked through all of the evidence and here is how I'm gonna rule. I have a situation where you rent out one room and then you give her another and you feel like she shouldn't complain because you think that room's better. That's not up to you. That's not what a contract is. A contract, is an offer and an acceptance, an agreement between two people that things are gonna go a certain way. And one side can't unilaterally change that and then pretend that everything's gonna be okay. Normally, when somebody stays half the month, I would tell them, well, you know what, You're, you stayed, so you gotta owe half the month. But this is a situation where not only did she get the wrong room, not only were there rats, not only were there people you were telling her steal her food, uh, but much, much more importantly, the lady had to drive all the way from North Carolina without you warning her that these problems were going to continue. So in this case, I think she's right. I think you owe her the full 500. I'm not going to turn because you're angry at her a $500 case into a 4,000 or whatever it is you're asking for. I forget because it's so silly every time I read it, you know, where you've got these receipts for everything. My pop tarts were stolen. Everything I bought was stolen. That's not how we prove up a case in court. But I agree with you that you should have gotten your $500 back. My verdict in this case is for the plaintiff in the amount of $500. So the plaintiff prevails. She gets her $500 back. Ms. Wood, who's the defendant, Ms. Wood, let me ask you, how do you feel about this? What do you think? Well, I wish I'd gotten my text messages sent to the judge because I had told her in December I didn't know which room she'd really be able to have. You know, a lot of people coming would not want to stay anywhere where there are rats in the rooms. Had you warned her there might be rats in the room? I don't remember. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it does happen, but it's not something. I think once I knew there were some, I probably told her. And I've, I've got lots of rat traps around, and I had to be careful where I put them because I didn't want her dog to get in the rat trap. <laughs> You're too much. All right, Ms. Wood, sorry about that. you got to give her the money back. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Atkinson, <laughs> I guess you're feeling pretty good about this. I know you were suing for $3,800. You're, you're going to get your 500 back, but that's all you're going to get. Are you okay with that? Um, I respect whatever the judge's decision was. So I'm just uh, privileged and honored that the People's Court is here for us. 
Well, listen, congratulations to you, and uh, I hope things go well for you from now on. Thank you so much. That'll wrap it up for this case. Now it's time for another session of After the Verdict. Well, uh, I don't really even know where to start. There was some bombshell testimony in this case from <laughs> Katie Dahl, who really, I think, carried the day. She came across as a little wooden, but, but really, that, you, you, couldn't, you can't deny that that was compelling. A compelling, compelling, right? compelling testimony. Uh, but uh, never look, contradicted herself. No, uh, no. You know. Never blinked. Didn't look uh, like it. Never. <laughs> <laughs> didn't look like anybody was giving was coaching her. No, nah, not <laughs> a bit. Not a bit. But hey, at the at uh, the end of the day, in a case like this, it's a basic contract dispute. And when you negotiate with somebody to provide a room like this, you have a bargain for exchange, and you're supposed to provide that room in a habitable condition absolutely. in exchange for the cash. And this probably was not a habitable. Uh, situation. No, not between um, I, you know between the rats and the right. and the the other people living there and everything. She's else sleeping in the car some nights. I don't know if she slept there the whole night. I think right. she went to the car and then when when Ms. Wood whacked the rat, I, you know, right. I gotta tell you, I loved both of them. <laughs> My particular Ms. Wood is what we call a Janet Reno Floridian. Yes, um, old school. Floridian. Old school, hardy, like yes. stuff doesn't scare. She doesn't no. scare easily. No, I could see her killing a rat. Yeah. I can All see right. her whacking a rat <laughs> and uh, saying, come back in, I whacked it, and everything's fine. Um, Interesting, there were rats in the house. Every, nobody really disputes that, that rats got in, they chewed on things, etc. Many years ago, when I lived in Boston as a young man, I was working as a waiter, uh, I lived in an apartment that got infested by rats because it was right next to the subway stop at Fenway Park, and they just they ran out of money in the budget for rat poison or something, so they got into our apartment, and we were unfortunately having to kill them with hockey sticks and things like that to just keep them under control. But one day, finally, the rat man came, and he gave me a little lesson in, la in rat lore. And he said, a rat can climb straight up a brick wall of a building up to like two or three stories. A rat has teeth that are harder than steel and can chew through steel. They can get through a space the size of a coin, like, like you know, a half dollar. Uh, they're just amazing animals. We just don't want to have them in our kitchen. Yeah, I want them <laughs> in the kitchen. <laughs> That's the thing. Uh, but uh, at the end fire of ants outside, that's certainly not on the landlord, right. but controlling a rat population inside. And it really doesn't mean that anybody's filthy or anything else. When you're by the water, it right. can be a pro you know, that's, that's, there are a lot of rats, it's not your fault. But you do need to do something that's effective to keep them from the house. Yeah, look, a rat-free apartment, I think, is one, Pretty of, basic. one of the basic <laughs> components of, of a rental. Barney from Vegas wants to know, how long have you and Doug Llewellyn been working together at the People's Court? Well, I got to tell you, during the first run of People's Court, I knew Doug for the 12 years of the run. Um, and, you know, we talked from time to time afterwards, and now he's joined us again. Doug Llewellyn is just one of the great people I know, one of the nicest guys, and nice to this day. <laughs>